Ladies and gentlemen, it's a wonderful Thursday here at East Jackson. We're looking at module 1.4. Now, we've been looking at arithmetic uh, sequences with explicit and recursives, right? So I need you to understand one thing. Um, as I was helping Isaac last night on his homework, kind of checking and kind of filling in some misconceptions, there's only two things that you need in order to write the explicit form of an arithmetic sequence. Only two things. You need to know the first term and then the common difference, right? And because it's arithmetic, it is, ju it is just like a linear equation, okay? It's a constant rate of change, meaning the D is really your slope, okay? So you gotta make sure you understand that. Now the recursive, the only thing you need for the recursive it's just a common difference, and you can write the equation because everything else is a rubber stamp. Okay, you got to get that straight in your head. He had a lot of misconceptions about what all was needed to do these things, so we had to do some uh, straightening up last night. All right, so we're going to find the missing terms in the sequence, um, and but we're going to do it kind of like this. So hopefully you've been shown. These are really like ordered pairs. So you got to make sure you understand this. Um, this is 1, 5, 3, 11. Well, ladies and gentlemen, slope is change in x over change in what? Y. Wrong. Slope is change in y over what? Yeah, y'all just in, uh, y'all in uh, autopilot mode. Now, how far is it from one to three? Is it going up the number line or down the number line? It's going up the number line. So that is a positive two. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Now, five to 11 is how much? How's, how's five to 11? That's going up by a positive six, right? If the number you're starting with is going up the number line, then it is a positive change for that particular coordinate. If it's going down the number line, then it is a negative change. Now, most of you ninth graders that it said in my, in my room and Miss Patrick's room know what I just done right here, right? Now, eighth graders, you probably never seen that, have you? You probably were shown slope as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? Okay. Well, you probably were shown a little graphic organizer, and they probably told you to cut it out, color it, and put it in your notebook. Now, you did? Miss Reed? Yeah, because she's been up here, and she knows how we teach it. Now, y2 minus y1 is nothing more than how are the y's changing. x2 minus x1 is finding the difference between those numbers, meaning how is the x changing, right? So changing y over changing x, that's slope. So what I do is I tend to take my ordered pairs and stack them, right? So it lines up my x's, and then it lines up my what? y's. And I look at how, how are they changing. Well, on this one, the x's are changing by 2, right? So I put that in my denominator. It's a positive 2, so I'll, I'll put it signed with it, right? Now, the y's are changing by how much? 6. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to simplify that fraction. What does that become? It becomes 3 over 1, which is nothing more than what? 3. So my common difference is what? What's my common difference? My D is 3, guys. So this to this better go by 3, and this to this better go by what? So if I add 3 to 5, what do I get? Thank you. If I add 3 to 8, what do I get? Now do you see? See all that stuff that you learned with linear applications, linear equations, are still in effect now. Okay? So you got to make sure you understand that. Those are all available in your toolbox.
Any questions? Now, that's one way to think about it. Let's look at another way. Well, let's do another. I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to let you do number two. You ready? Go. Is anybody doing any way different than what I've just shown on this? Is anybody approaching? What'd you get? Okay, so how did you get seven? You can do what's called the average mean, and that's what the backside is going to really start looking at is doing it because it's a constant rate of change. That means it, the difference is evenly distributed, right? I'll show that in a minute when we get to the back, but I really need you to also do it this way as well. I need you to do it both ways because I need your mind to be able to go down both rabbit holes. Does that make sense? So the first side is strictly slope. The backside will do by the mean, okay? So good good job. All right. Um, we've got 118 and 5, negative 10, right? How are my X's changing? Stop, drop, look, and listen. Go, let's go, folks. Come on. What's it? It's going by 4. What about 8? Negative 28. Good. So my slope is changing y over changing x, which is negative 28 over 4, which is negative what? Negative 7. But it's really the difference, is it not? So these better be going down by negative 7 every time. So that would be 11, 4, negative 3, and then another would be what? Negative 10. So how did we do? Good. Okay. Would you like to stop? Well, this, I'll leave a third one for you. Uh, describe your method for missing for finding missing terms. Will it always work? It won't always work. I want it always work. Okay. First off, what type of sequence are we doing? Arithmetic, right? We're doing arithmetic, which means that it's going to change by a common difference, right? You know how linears change by a constant rate of change. So, will the method always work? Yes or no? Yeah, you can do that. So, finding slope will always work. How do you know? Yeah, because it's math, and math always works, as the young man said. How do you know that it will always work, guys? Arithmetic sequence is a linear representation, right? Another way to represent linears. And linear relationships go up by a common or a constant rate of change, right? And it has a common difference. So, yeah, it always works. And that's how we know. All right, so let's look at the back. Go to the back. We're on number six, right? We'll do a couple there, and then we'll let you do this. Um, okay. Holy snap a uh, What's six? Six is what now? Ten or twelve. Ten, right? Yes? <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize if this blows your ears out. Now, look. How far is it from 40 to 10? Huh? Uh, I told you why I skipped number five. I didn't copy it. My bad. Uh oh. I did. I copied six twice. Today. All right. So let's look at this. How far is it from 40 to 10? Negative 30. Now. How far is it? One, two, three, four, what? So, so the mean 
if you have to break 30 spaces in the five groups, each group is a six, right? And it's negative six, so therefore, that would be what? 34, that'd be what? 28. Another six would be what? Another negative six would be what? How much? Good job. All right, that's called the mean, arithmetic mean. All you're doing is how far is my spacing? How far are my numbers, right? And dividing it by how many spaces you have. Because it's evenly distributed, is it not? Yes or no? Why can you do that? Why does that work? Because they're what? They're evenly distributed. They have a constant rate of change. There's a common difference between them, right? Does that make sense? Y'all okay with that? Okay, I want you to do the next one. Go. I think it's seven, right? All right, guys. This is a wonderful piece, so. How far is it from negative 23 to 5? Nope. 28. So it's, it's 23 spaces from negative 23 to 0, right? Plus another 5, right? So it's 28 spaces now. Or a 28 difference, right? What? Is it? My numbers are increasing. So do I count this one? Uh, I don't count until I take a step. One, two, three, four, five, six, what? Okay, so that's what? So all of these better change by how much? Yeah, there you go. So that's uh, negative 19, negative 15, negative 11, negative 7, negative 3, 1, right? So what do you think? All right, good. Now, will this always work? Will it always work, yes or no? Why? Quit saying because it's math. That's always answer choice A, because math always works. But you got to tell me why. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You, you have a wonderful career in politics because you are not answering my question. You're telling me everything but what I need to know. And you're making it sound good, so consider that. Now, go. No, sir, it will always work. Why? It's a common difference, a constant rate of change between this. And all you're doing is, if I've got this many spaces and it has to be evenly distributed which means it has to move at the same rate then you you find an average it works right there you go all the time now so here's what i want you to do i'm about to pass out the homework the homework now is going to going to take your head and it's going to crush it it's going to stress you to the max so we're going to do a little bit of problems on the homework okay all right. Okay, guys. We've got to find the missing values. Then we got to find the common difference, and we got to write some equations. This is your homework. So, young folks, how far is it from fifteen to twenty? Huh? Fifteen to twenty. I'm sorry. I, fifteen to twenty is five, but I, it should have been fifteen to twenty-five, which is what. And it's two places, right? So, y'all good? Well, how far is it from 15 to 25? How many spaces? One, two. Okay. So, my common difference is five. What's my first term? What's A1? What's A1 in here? Come on. Five. That's exactly right. It's right there. Now, listen to me, young folks. How do you remember these equations? This is how you do it. You write them every time. Now, let's fill in the blanks. A sub n equals, what's the first term? Plus, what's the common difference? The n minus 1 is just like a rubber stamp, right? Now, that's the explicit, right? Here it is. 
right there. Now, no, 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 no. It didn't say solve it. It said come up with the explicit and recursive formulas, right? Yeah, it said come up with it. didn't say solve it. You got to read the instructions. Huh? Term. See, A sub 1, what's the 1 take place of? The term. At the end, that's the term, no. Right? It's the location. What? How far is it from 15 to 25? Divided by how many spaces? Thank you. We're doing the mean, right? All right. So if I want the recursive, then that's the equation. All I have to do is turn around. If I write it, then all I got to do is turn around and fill in what I've got, right? This is a subscript. The n minus 1 is a subscript. Does it go up there with that? It's a subscript. It means it goes down below, right? So plus what? That's it. Boom, done. That's it. So what you got to understand is this. Watch me. So, yeah. on arithmetic, those are the only two things that got substituted in, right? For, for the explicit. For the recursive, there you go. What would this be? Threads and giggles. What would this be if it was in terms of zero term? What would it be? Huh? Zero plus so if I backed up the zero here, but if I backed up five here, it'd be what? So what would the equation look like? Right? If that's in terms of the zero term. So how can you get that, Palmer? Distribute the who? What's negative 5 plus 5? Right? This is zero term. This is first term. How do I know the difference? Uh, the little subscript thingy. Yeah. This is what it looks like for first term. This is what it looked like. It looks like slow pairs at 4 for the zero. Right? All right. So, let's go to this one. Uh, yeah, you can do that. I, that's going to make you think a little bit. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I want to do this. I want to do one of these. And then we're going to uh, do another one. And this one's the one that's going to get you, okay? Man, y'all smell that? Y'all smell that uh, fresh cut grass coming through there? Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm allergic to grass. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. On these, what they're wanting you to do, who did the five and the zero take place of? Again, so it's functional notation. They're giving you an input, and they're wanting you to find the output. So let me do one of these. So that would be 3, f of 5, equals 3, plus 4 times 5 minus 1. Well, folks, what's 5 minus 1? So that's 4 times 4, so that's 3 plus 16, which equals what? 19. So f of 5 equals what? 19. Okay, f of 5 equals 19. So that's what you're going to do on these two right here. Questions? What? How did you get uh, the four? Who did the N take, who did the five take the place of, son? N, where's the N at? Right there. Yeah, you got to substitute. Come on. All right. Any questions off these? Anybody? What? They're giving you an input on function notation, and they're asking you to evaluate it. That's how Euler back in the 1700s said, here, take this, evaluate it, tell me what the answer is. So that's the shorthand of 
saying all that, right? Nope. This is F of zero. Oh, I ain't got to yet. Yeah, anywhere in is. Yeah, so that's three plus four times zero minus one. So that's three plus four times negative one. I got a lot of chatter back there in the back that I'm going to cut out in a second. Stop. Okay. Where? Here's this one right here. So if I'm going to do this one, that's f of 1 equals 2 times 1 minus 1 plus 6. That's 2 times 0 plus 6. 0 plus 6. I'm done. Right? All you're doing is taking and evaluating it. It's like, here's an it, here's it equation. Evaluate this input, right? And the inputs are where, who, what variable? In. 